My name is Nitsa and I would like to welcome you to my kitchen. This is actually my second recipe that I will be um, posting on YouTube. The first one was grandma's bread. Uh, that one is done in Greek and I was asked to do things in English so people could understand it. Greeks around the world can understand it uh, so they can start making my recipes. When I have a little bit of time, I will make that other recipe in English too. But uh, for today, I chose to make uh, the famous Greek fanuropita. Uh, if you're Greek, I'm sure you've heard of fanuropita. Uh, you've made fanuropita or your mother or grandmother have made it in the house. So I use fanurios is one of the most uh, famous saints in the Greek uh, Orthodox religion and we make his pie um, not only on his celebration day which is August 27th but we also make it when we want to pray to the saint to find something that we lost. Um, right now, I felt this is a very, very appropriate um, recipe to make as I feel that we are going through uh, a critical time, we're going through a turbulent time, and we want to find back our lives, we want to have back our health, uh, and we wish for the whole world to go back to what it used to be without having this COVID-19 going around. So I'm going to ask all the Greeks and the non-Greeks that are joining us or are watching this today to make or try to make this recipe. It's very, very easy. It needs very few ingredients and I'm sure you all have them in your homes. So I'm going to try, I'm going to ask you all to um, make this recipe and pray with me. Let's all pray so we can all have our lives and our health back. I am going to go around the table showing the recipes, but before we do that, I wanted to uh, show uh, the icon of uh, the saint, of Saint Fanurios. Um, I have a bunch of them in my home because he's one of my favorite saints and I pray to him all the time. We are going to make this pie today in his honor with a lot of prayers uh, going up to help us during this difficult time. So for this recipe, we're only going to need a few things, as I said, and we're going to start with um, flour. Uh, we have powdered sugar, an empty bowl, because that's where we're going to make it. And we also have um, our whisk, because that's what we're going to use to whisk it. And we have oil. We are going to have any type of oil, um, not olive oil because that's going to be too heavy for the recipe, but any type of oil like vegetable oil, canola oil, um, corn oil, any type of light oil that you have at home, you can use. Um, orange juice. I sometimes use the store-bought orange juice. Today, I actually did not have any at home, so I I squeezed actually three oranges and that is enough for my recipe. Uh, sometimes I use the um, orangeade uh, from the bottle. So whatever type of oranges. I've even tried this recipe with uh, pineapple juice and it came out really, really good. So whenever I want to make a fanuropita, I make it and I try to find at home what I have. Um, it's a dessert that could be eaten during Lent and all Greeks uh, know about this so um, I'm gonna go on with giving you the rest of the ingredients um, the dark uh, the dark ingredient that you see right next to the orange juice is the wine red wine I like to use uh, dry wine like um, not too sweet I like to use something dry uh, walnuts are in the back we're gonna use them for the end um, and we have um, baking powder you can also use the flour that um, that rises by itself but I like to use baking powder and we have um, our cinnamon and our ground gloves so these are all the recipes and I will be giving you uh, all the all the ingredients written out so you have them and in what quantities are going to be needed so we're going to start with our recipe. Um, in order to measure all the ingredients, we're going to use the same cup, 
today I'm going to use a beautiful cup that my friend uh, Fotimi brought uh, for me when she went to her beautiful island Corfu. I like everything Greek so and I love cups. I drink my coffee every day in a different cup. So this is a beautiful cup and this is what we're going to use. All the ingredients were measured with this cup. We use the same measuring thing. So one, um, one measuring container with whatever you use this is what you're gonna count everything with and um, this recipe is made for uh, an aluminum pan this is the pan that we buy from the store and then we throw out so it's measured to fit this pan so this cup was used and I've measured all my ingredients so I can start preparing I have put about two and a half cups of um, powdered sugar Normally I put two. The reason I put two and a half today is because I did not have store-bought orange juice and I had to use squeezed oranges which um, are not that sweet. So, But if you don't like too sweet, you can cut down on the sugar and that is fine. So I put my sugar in the bigger bowl and then I'm going to add all my liquid ingredients. So I'm going to take my oil. This is one cup of oil. Okay, as I said before, it's some type of light oil, not olive oil. So one cup of oil. This is one cup of squeezed oranges. Again, this is the measuring cup I used. I did not use the this type of cups. I used the, the other one. And then we have three quarters of the cup of the wine. So I'm going to add that in there too. And I'm going to whisk it, whisk it just a little bit. I'm going to whisk these three ingredients together. They don't need to be whisked too much. That's why this cake is so easy to make. It doesn't require a mixer. You just need a bowl and a whisk. So to this liquid mixture that I've made. I'm going to add uh, the ground cinnamon and the ground cloves. I have um, a half a teaspoon of ground cloves. You can put more if you like. For me, uh, cloves have a strong, um, a strong presence in the dessert, so I don't like to put that much of it, but if you'd like a little bit more, you could. I like to put a little bit more cinnamon, so I have two tablespoons um, of cinnamon and I'm going to mix everything together and as you see most of my ingredients have already been added to this mixture I do like to have the icon of the saint present when I make it and there is a prayer for you to say while you make this cake. You can find it easily online. So after I mix the sugar with all the liquid ingredients, the only thing I have to do is put in the flour. So I measured four cups of flour here, and I have a little bit on the side just in, in case that I need it. Again, I used the same measuring cup to measure everything. And over here I have the baking powder, which I'm going to add as I add the flour. So I add a little bit of flour and the baking powder. And I'm going to whisk it until all the flour is mixed. starting to become more solid. You're not going to expect to see 
a very, very thick batter. To be honest, it reminds me a little bit of the pancake uh, batter when we make it, just a touch thicker. So, okay. It is still a little bit on the liquid side, so I'm going to use this to get a little bit of flour. So I already put four cups, those cups, and I'm just gonna add a little bit more, maybe one or two tablespoons. One or two tablespoons, that's how much I'm putting in. If you can see the mixture, it is now becoming thicker. like this you can see it and what I'm gonna do in the end I'm gonna add the walnuts you can put as many or as little walnuts um, if you have somebody that is allergic to walnuts um, at home you can skip the walnut part and what I do sometimes and I mean kids enjoy it too so you can make this as a, as a healthy cake without butter for kids I put chocolate chips. Um, you can use any type of chocolate chips and you're gonna have an amazing result. So there's a lot of variation. The fact that this cake does not have any butter in it um, makes it very, very, very light, very good breakfast. And as I said, for Greeks, it's um, a cake that we make when we wanna pray to the saint. So it is very, it has a different meaning for the Greek culture and the Greek Orthodox. So my batter is ready. And the only thing I need to do now is just take it and... And we're all set. Our fanuropita is ready. This is it. So we're going to get our oven ready. I've already put mine to warm up and I'm going to show you right now. I have already put the oven at 375 degrees Fahrenheit. That is about half of that is in Celsius. So if you're using a Celsius oven, um, if you're somewhere else in the world than the United States, you are going to probably put the oven around 180 degrees Celsius. So I'm going to put the timer on. The Fano Ropita needs about one hour, but we're not uh, going to open the oven at all for the first 30 to 40 minutes. We're gonna let it um, cook like that. Because if we open the oven, I'm putting 60 minutes 60 minutes so that's about an hour and I'm gonna put my fanuropita in and the time has passed about an hour and 10 minutes that we have our uh, fanuropita in the oven and it's time for us to take it out there we go so we baked it for an hour and 10 minutes at 375 degrees Fahrenheit um, after the first 35-40 uh, minutes, we opened the oven and we turned it around. We can do that after the 35-40 minutes. We can open the oven and start turning it around a couple of times so it cooks evenly, uh, depending on your oven. So this is the fanuropita that's going to come out after you bake it. And this is our delicious final product of fanuropita. Good luck in making it. If you have any questions, you can always ask them below um, this video and I will uh, answer them to the best of my knowledge.